No, no, you did it right. Yeah, jo Georgie Caracanian. That's good, good. Georgie Caracani and Robin Black here looking at Georgie's fight from Bellator in Dublin. Georgie, it's just starting. But you had you just found out that your son was born like hours earlier? Yes, actually, as I was fighting, she was uh, <laughs> going through the whole process. So when the fight was over, I talked to her and, uh, you know, finally saw my baby. So, yeah. Wow, wow. So this is the first minute of a fight. You've had a, a ton of fights. What's this first minute like for you? This first minute is uh, me just staying uh, nice and, uh, you know, just just being in a flow state. You know, I think yeah. that's a fight is very important. So in, in the locker room, I found, uh, oh, that's a nice throw. Yeah, that's a yeah. nice throw. <laughs> so, yeah, so let me interrupt you. You, yeah. you get thrown there. You just need to stay calm and just accept that we're on the bottom now and we're just going to work with it, right? Yeah, I just accept the fact that he had a nice throw. I give it to him, but then I'm like, all right, I got to get you back. I got to get you back. So you fought to get back to guard. Now he's standing over your open guard. You've got his foot. What's the game here? The game is just to stand back up and keep chopping his legs. You know, just and keep here chopping we are. his legs. So I get back up, just moving. So my range. just sort of frame that shoulder and then get your hips out and we're back to where you want and we're going to kick his leg again. Yep, so frame your shoulder to my right and then bring my hips to my left so I have the opening area to escape. So yep. so he's got a little eye poke. You've yep, been eye did, poked. Yeah, that was an accident. Yeah, you've been eye poked. You've eye poked the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do here in this moment? You just how do you stay focused? What are you saying to yourself? Uh, I'm just telling myself, you know what? I think those leg kicks are working. Keep 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 yep. kicking those legs and just you know that right hand is ready too, so I'm just I'm just waiting for anything. But I I could tell by his uh, body language that those leg kicks are working. So yeah, even a, even a minute and a half in, you're seeing a response from him, right? Eh? Yeah, I do see oh, a response I, from his. Action. I actually just saw you just fake one, and he and he wobbled out of the way. Like he's really reacting even to the little leg kick fakes. Yeah, yeah, you know that that was the thing. Just to right away start those low ankle kicks right away because. I mean, he's a big boy, and this is my first fight at 55, so I had to do everything perfect. Even at 45, a lot of these guys were – oh, there's another nice one. At 45, these guys were taller than you. At 55, these guys are tall, man. Yeah, and I, and I feel like that's when my right hand comes into place because I have a good <laughs> over and right, so yeah. it doesn't matter how tall they are. <laughs> yeah, as long as you get that one step into range, you can rip them. Oh, that's yep. a nice little touch there. Yeah, I use that's, that throw a lot. I was going to just say, it just looks like something that's just super natural for you. Yeah, I do it in the gym so many times, man. So I use it in several fights. So, yeah, when they give me that, I just take it. So your training partners, like guys like Juan and Cobb and people you trained with, are you still getting it on them even when they know it's coming? You can get it on them sometimes? I, I could get it on them. I mean, I don't want to make them look bad, but they make me, they throw me too. So. Of course. We, we, no, we I just mean. Other, we know each other's number. Yeah. yeah but Yeah. No, but I just words. mean. Yeah. If you can catch your training partners occasionally with it, this guy has never seen it. So you're going to yeah, get him. Yeah, quick, exactly. Yeah. Right? So I, it right? works in the gym a lot. I mean, yeah, that's great. Kicks, even the low kicks, it took about 10 years to stop someone, you know, to see that action like that Paul was giving me. Yeah. So, uh, the low kick for you now, when you think about it, that is your longest range weapon to his closest target. So it makes a lot of sense for you. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And um, I feel like the playing soccer for so many years, it's a natural thing for me to kick the legs yeah. or kick anything. Yeah. I mean, it's the same. Cause kicking the soccer ball this high off the ground, it, it's exactly the same yeah. as kicking that calf, you know? Yeah, same yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't feel nothing. I mean, I felt pain the next day. I couldn't walk that much, but at, really? during the fight, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> so we're on top now. He's going to elbow you. That doesn't feel good, but this is a real, there's a real feeling of dominance when you're on top, eh? Yeah, so I'm on top and I'm trying to figure his jujitsu out because I know he goes for a lot of leg locks. He had a few finishes with the leg locks. So I'm just trying to stay on top, kind of win the round because in, in my head, I'm like, okay, he had a nice throw. So yeah. I'm thinking then it might have put him in the judge's eye, like, oh, you might, you might give him this round because of the throw. So I want to stay on top yeah. here. And while you're in there assessing everything that's happening, flowing with the game, you're still able to put that thought into your mind. How did this round go? What might those three judges think? You can still think that way? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, I, I feel like especially when I'm in the fight, it, it's 
it's not a big deal for me to think like that. But if I nice. if I'm not in a fight and if I think like that, it almost backfires on me. <laughs> mm, yeah, 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 right. So you help the guy up. I mean, you're a good dude at heart. You want to smash these guys' face in, and you're you're pretty ornery sometimes. But you're a good guy at heart. I always, yeah, yeah, you know. But I'm mean, inside the cage. You know, when those five minute starts, I turn into try to throw. Yeah, that's a nice throw. So throw. and in that moment. You acknowledge in your mind, okay, nice job, kid, right? Yeah, I was like, you know, don't post your hands out. We don't want to break any hands yeah. and be on any <laughs> highlight. But yeah. I was just like, just go with it. <laughs> nice. Nice. There's that little trip. And the reason I asked about your training partners is because if people who know it's there and you can still occasionally catch your boys with it, a guy who's never doesn't know your game, you're going to get that every, all day. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if, even if the person is watching this right now, I still... I feel like if exactly. I fight him, I could get that. Well, that's the thing. We're talking about low leg kicks. The next guy is like, I better get ready for Georgie's low leg kick. But he can spend six weeks getting ready for it. You spent 12 years preparing it. Exactly. I agree with you. Yep. You know. So beginning around two, how are you feeling right now? Do you remember? I, I'm feeling already like I feel like I give different pace to him. So now I got to like, uh, you know, throw something at, at 100% like with my hands. I feel like I let him get used to the fifty percent, but right, uh -huh. there, right there. Yeah, that's, where <laughs> that's that. That's that ornery overhand, right here. I I did a break. Oh, so talk to me about this feeling here. Yeah. So I I if you see, could see like in the first round I was throwing some fakes with my right kick to see his reaction. So the second round when I faked it with the right kick, I saw his, he started check, and then yeah. second I threw and I overhand right. To his Do you know you have this? Do you know you have this? Yeah, I already knew right away. I know it's it's not good to do it against the cage, but like you said, if you've been drilling this for so long, yeah. And and what's what's in your head right now? What's in your head? Oh, uh, right now that's where my son came in my head, and that's when I think <laughs> that's the first thing I said, my son. But that's the first thing that came in my in my mind. I was like, all right, all the emotions could kick in right now. It's uh, it really is an incredible thing, man. You're like halfway across the world. <laughs> Your son is born in California. You're fighting a man in a cage. I know, man. It, it was just, it, it's, uh, it was, it was, I, now that looking it back, it was kind of one of those, it was tough to deal with it. But now, like, I put it back, you know, I went and fought there. It just, it got me that much tougher and mentally. And it's, it's a mm. good feeling. Yeah, you can see it. Like, you can see the purity of the emotion that you're feeling. It's beautiful, man. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you. So, would walk me through this. I see the little fake takedown, yeah. and then and you see his leg came up because he thought he was I was gonna kick him. So that's when, uh -huh. the overhand. and that's when I saw him a little dazed and uh, sorry for him in the back of the head right there. I was in well, a fight moment. It's yeah. legal. You, the, you, <laughs> as you know, there's only that one thin strip. So people see anything behind the ear and they think it's bad. But all those were were legal shots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then here now, as you oh, I see it. As you have it, a lot of kids when they're young, they think you got to lean back on that, but you're coming up and over top on that guillotine. Watch yeah, right so here. Watch like, there. I it is. Come up and I bring my left shoulder. Now I go back. So when I go back, mm -hmm. now it's, it's a different squeeze. And and Armin Gittins, you know, uh, ten out of ten. Yeah, I could finish pretty strong. So you take your left shoulder and put it onto the back of his head or the back of his neck. Back back then... of the neck. Back over the neck. So I just mm -hmm. kind of kind of bring this up back of the neck and then I fall back. So even before that adjustment, you knew that was where the adjustment was going and you knew you were going to get it. Yeah, because I was already under his chin. And when he kind of lifted me up to escape, mm -hmm. I came up with them and I dropped my shoulder and then mm -hmm. I went back down with them again. So, And I could hear him make noises too, so I knew he was choking. But Paul is a good guy. Good, good kid. Respect him. Yes, good. Um, and so again, yeah, you can see too. It's over now too. You know. <laughs> also, this is a great moment for you. But if you don't have Paul, that moment doesn't even exist. It doesn't, you know. I, I think it makes two fighters to make a great moments like that. And the best one walks out with the victory. But you're absolutely right. So, and uh, um, what's going to be next for you? Obviously, were you planning to fight in June or July? Or did you even know before this this interruption with, with the virus and what we're facing now? So, yeah, I, I signed a new uh, four-fight deal with Bellator. Nice. And uh, I have a fight for July uh, 17th 
at the uh, Oklahoma at the Windstar against Miles Jury at 155. Oh so. yeah! And I know Miles. You know he's a, he's a great fighter. He's been a UFC tough fighter, and uh, I just hope this coronavirus stops soon. And it, like I have no problem fighting in front of the empty arena. It just it just I think you know martial arts more than I do because you analyze it because. I mean, us fighters, we need to we need to train together. Like, yeah, you know, the camp is gonna start yeah. soon. Like, the closer I get to July, that's how I'm thinking. So I gotta find some fighters that didn't have any COVID nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, here's the fair thing about about that: when you're fighting or when you're doing any kind of competition, is whatever curveball or challenge, as long as both men, both opponents have to deal with it, it's fair. It right? is. You're both facing the same challenge, right? Right. Uh, man, man, I'm excited. I'm gonna uh, go back and repost that one uh, that one knockout of yours on Monday because I'm just such a fan <laughs> of your work, man. And, and thanks no, for doing I'm this. It's a, it's a thrill brother. for me. Believe me, the blink, well, the bink, the narrative is the best. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. It was a real thrill. Uh, and to our um, to our friends that are watching on Bellator uh, Twitter right now, we'll be back with Ricky Bandeas. Did you see Ricky Bandeas' knockout that yeah, night? Yeah, bro. It's beautiful. I'm, the people should tune in, stay there, and listen to him. I'm, I'm curious, too. Good kid. Good kid. That was a crazy knockout. Man, I'm such a fan of your work, and I'm such a fan of you. Thanks for doing this, brother. Thank you, Robert. Thanks. Enjoy the hostilities, friends. We'll be back.